Travis Wayne Goodso. All right, let's get into the text material of the Book of Mormon. Having been tampered with on the real historical literal history background. 33 minutes in. Which, yes, they love to play little number games. The enemy. Notice where the debt of our nation is at. Notice where the Dow Jones Industrial is. They love to play the numbers game. They've been plotting this for 200 years. And those who screw it up get punished or kicked out of office or positions of power or are fired or are replaced by a, a woman who is more loyal to the church than a president of the United States. Pay attention to the news, guys. The church is behind all of it. <clears throat> Unbelievable. I saw that she had made the Forbes 400. And then I saw the national news. <laughs> Somebody got dropped. Oh, dear God. But, yeah. She was loyal to the church, and the church rewarded her. And then she laundered some of it back to the church through tithing. All for holding the homeless hostage in human trafficking. Did the videos. I was an inside reporter on that. And so... Since I'm retired and not going to talk about those kinds of videos anymore, the Book of Mormon, we need to use the 1830 edition. We need to restore all of Joseph Smith's scriptures. And remove the replacements that uh, Brigham Young ordered to have made. Even the Book of Mormon, uh, Brigham Young had attempted to do a second edition during Joseph's lifetime, and then Joseph saw it and said, no, put it back. Brigham Young is in charge of the missionaries after 1838's coup, and yet he still kept pushing the Christian Jesus. And so thus Joseph had to die. Just like Earl, but not like Earl, because Brigham Young is Earl. <laughs> Utah girls who did the from Magna. They did that song. <clears throat> Notice I'm not putting theme songs in the description below. I mean I could do opening and closing hymns. But that takes too much time, and I don't have too many people who are even caring to notice in the previous channel that that was also part of the video. Because everything is symbolic. And I'm trying to teach you that through the videos I used to do. All of these are prophecies. Not because Brett Joseph Smith had the title of prophet, and therefore everything he does is a prophecy. Like the current church has redefined what a prophet is. You believe them. Oh, we're so grateful for the revelations that have come out this conference. What revelations? <laughs> what, because you claim to be a revelator? They were revelations? They weren't revelations. Nelson made it very clear. Mormonism is now a sex cult. God. <laughs> a 
And so I, one of the many projects that I have is to redo and restore the Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith's works with footnoting, real footnoting to use for study purposes, similar to a commentary, which also is among the projects to be done. But if nobody cares and Mormons utterly refuse to accept Joseph Smith as the learning of the Jews and the Book of Mormon as the learning of the Jews, especially when they say in text, they're the learning of the Jews, Mormons continue to insist that they're anti-Semites turning Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon into Christians, then there's nothing I can do about it. It's just a waste of my time. Like I did the video about Jonah and the whale. I came back, and what happened? Nothing. None of them repented. <sighs> yeah. And so, the uh, little part that says the Book of Mormon, an account written by the hand of Mormon, written are uh, upon plates taken from the plates of Nephi. That's the large plates. But again, this is not literal history. It's learning of the Jews, which means it's prophecy. <clears throat> and so Mormon, yeah, the few critics who caught on to this, who knew a little bit, but didn't put them into the big puzzle piece of the picture of the history of the church, uh, Moore is Morgan, Mon is Monroe, for the two characters in, uh, after 9-11-1826 with Canandaigua, New York. It's unclear as to whether you were able to hear that in the video. Joseph Smith had to rewrite the 116 pages. And so the small plates are what Joseph Smith Sr. did. And so, yes, that's why in section 10 in 1820, no, yeah, it's section 10. That's 1828, but it's supposed to be 1829, right? Because Bruce R. McConkie changed it, because he knew the ramifications of what it meant to have that section as sex as 1829. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 And so, yeah, according to Section 10, it's like at the beginning of the summer, Joseph was put on timeout for the theft of Martin Harris stealing the 116 pages. And then so summer of 1828, oh, it must be just a month or two later, he's off of probation. And so then we can go back in time to forward in time with section four in 1829, a marvelous work and wonder is about to come forth among the children of men. <laughs> Nope, Joseph was still on time out. And this section comes out. And so it's important to know and footnote section 10 with the first part of the Book of Mormon so that we know that this is the small plates that Joseph Smith Sr. is telling Junior about. Oh, you thought it was actual Jesus's voice, did you? <sighs> My God. And so you need to pay attention to this part right here. It is an abridgment of the record of the people of Nephi and also of the Lamanites, written to the Lamanites. These are prophecy codes. They are not literal history people. And Joseph Smith helped you understand who is who. 
Now, yes, Joseph Smith let Mormons believe that there was some literal historyness in this. You know, preach to the Lamanites. And then so people go and preach to the native Indians. You are not supposed to think in those terms. Because Joseph Smith also put in his little bit and said that this is a book of prophecy and revelation, which is also in the Book of Mormon. Second Nephi chapter 25, it's a book of prophecy, just like the book of Isaiah is all prophecy. And then Mormon chapter three or chapter eight, verse thirty-three. A book of Revelation. As we're nearing the end, we have a year to have Joseph Jr. on timeout while Senior rewrites the 116 pages to bridge it with where uh, Sidney Rigdon had continued on from the original manuscript of William Morgan. And then uh, uh, then come out and say, a marvelous work and wonder is about to come forth among the children of men. And if it's not exactly quoted, it's because I did not memorize it, even though they told us to in the MTC. A marvelous work, and not a wonder. <laughs> I use associative memory. And so, having real church histor historical background information when you read this is kind of essential to your eternal salvation. It's not something to just dismiss because the current prophets, who every word is a prophecy, That's the wrong definition. And so, yes, which are a remnant of the house of Israel, also the Jew and Gentile, written by way of commandment, blah, blah, blah. This is where you need to understand Joseph Smith Sr.'s religion. Not just that he was a York Rite master mason at Canandaigua, New York. And so you'll see the Temple of Solomon in... Uh, Second Nephi, after they flee their brothers, and he builds a temple in Nephi, which would come up later in the work that Sidney Rigdon did with uh, King Noah, who usurped the temple. Uh -huh. and, uh, and so the house of Israel was his religion. He didn't become a member. That is important for those of you who know who I'm talking about, the new Israelites in Vermont. They were Congregationalists. He was excommunicated, formed his own church, called it the New Israelites. And so he merged it with Jewish mysticism called Kabbalah. Kabbalah, whatever you want to pronounce it like. I don't care. The meaning of the words are in the pictures that each consonantal letter represent. <clears throat> so if you're offended, if the wrong vowels are used, you're pulling an anachronism because there's more meaning than what you're offended with. And, uh, and so the House of Israel, or the Israel, New, New Israelites, of uh, Jewish Kabbalah has the tree of life and has uh, Hebrew and astronomy for looking to future star dates for prophecies to occur because the book of Revelation has star dates in them and so yes written in the learning of the Jews the new Israelites of Jewish Kabbalah use the book of Revelation for that purpose. And uh, it appears that they knew, but didn't 
quite know. Almost. I suspect Joseph Jr. figured it out, which means his father told him. But uh, the stories, likewise, correspond to signs in the heavens. In 2021, for example, if anybody was following me, whether it was on this channel or on TWG, I was doing a whole ton of videos that year of signs in the heavens that are straight from the Bible stories. And so uh, it, it's clear everybody's talking about the latter days, not just prophecies of events that will happen, but using the signs in the heavens to tell of those prophecies. And so in the Joseph Smith translation, Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, Joseph Smith Sr., adds with Junior and Sidney Rigdon sign in the heaven in the likeness of things on the earth that is new Israelite Jewish Kabbalah that he's using there and it has to do with signs in the heavens are prophecies literally written by the finger of God with the metaphoric usage because <laughs> if you put Trinitarian Jesus in there like some dumbass did who claimed to be a, a subscriber oh Travis you're right on that one point but you're wrong you're f neglecting Jesus as Trinitarian in a whole long diatribe get the hell off my channel you are not listening. You are not paying attention. God. <sighs> and so, yeah, I then have done the videos pointing out that Joseph Smith purposely arranged the facsimiles in the three positions rather than using all of them and doing an explanation for all of them and only publishing those three for a specific purpose, because they're the three solar eclipses over the United States of America that have been going on. We're about 10 days from number two over Utah. The shadow of the solar eclipse making a line over the United States of America, and the three together form the Hebrew letter A and last letter, which is a cross. And most people say that it's the Tau. No, it's the Chi in Greek. But uh, Greeks don't have it as the last letter. They have Omega now under Koine Greek. And so it's the, a different sign from the Egyptian documents. And uh, and so in Paleo-Hebrew, it preserves the origin of the alphabet and its intended purpose, which I put them on Academia for you. They're the brand new stuff. And I know at least one person saw two of them. Because <laughs> I get notified by Academia when the first viewer takes a look at them. Uh, and so, uh, you need to also know about uh, Notikaraton, if I pronounce that correctly, getting the right consonants in there, uh, Tamara and Gamatria. Those three I have found evidence for in the Book of Mormon in 116 replacement pages and uh, uh, that's because they're part of Jewish Kabbalah and Joseph Smith senior demonstrates that he knows this uh, Joe Samson Mormon with a P not without the P so it's not the same word meaning 
even though the P tends to be silent and people think it's the same name meaning and spell them wrong. It's like the Simpsons. <laughs> it's the Simpsons. <clears throat> but uh, he wrote a book written by the finger of God. Uh, he has refused to have further publications of it. So I believe the only way you're going to get it is if somebody has a, a used copy for sale. Because uh, I had rebought my book, which I've told you about my dad betraying me for the church. And uh, I had to buy it again. And uh, the second time I bought it, uh, Amazon allowed me to uh, put in a, a star rating and then a comment on the book. And I gave a nice review. However, after that review, he pulled it. And I can't find them on YouTube anymore either. <laughs> What's up with that, Joe? What's up with that? Oh, nope. You can get a new one. Dear God. <laughs> 84 bucks for a new one, but you can get it in two days with Prime membership. It is worth it. Even though he's Mormon and believe that he was defending the church, proving that it's literal history true, and that the learning of the Jewish Kabbalah, which was created in 600 CE, with the, was it the alphabet Ben Sura that was in 600, and then uh, in the dark or Middle Ages. There was a, uh, an author who did a, uh, a book that had a little story of Lilith, the first wife of Adam. That needs to be included in a fuller version of the Bible. Because it comes from the Egyptian documents, too. And corresponds with section one. The guy was brilliant, whoever wrote it even though it's sexual, but it's supposed to be. And so yeah, you can get a used one for 20 bucks, but there's only 19 left. Hurry, hurry. And then they have a collectible, which is $43. Uh, the version I had, there was a trouble with binding. The pages were falling out with the extended use that I was giving it. <clears throat> and uh, I was uh, having trouble See, because the, he came out with it in 1993. And so when I was uh, doing research on the, uh, the vocabulary and running tests, the uh, same, uh, Sade, I was having trouble uh, confirming in the vocabulary test with my Paleo Hebrew decipherment. And so that's why you run tests, is to confirm or rerun the uh, theory to uh, figure out what it is. And so Joe Sampson nailed it for the one letter. Everything else, no. But his explanation of uh, the, the three things I listed, excellent. Highly recommend it. But when he starts talking about how the vocabulary or his created meanings, no. So, yeah, good. You put it back out in print. Good for you. A lifetime student of the teachings of Joseph Smith, raised in rural Utah, he attended the University of Utah and is an apostate. He became interested in the in study of in, in studying the Hebrew language so he has no education he just did this all on his own uh, but uh, 
that's why I say that he created his own thing there with the alphabet letters and how they correspond with the meaning. But he nailed it. It's the throne for the Sade. And then when I plug that in, all of a sudden, oh, okay, yeah, there, yeah, confirmation. It's now an established fact. And so am I still in here? Crystal, Kim Belknap, Sherry Lincoln, Carl Stevenson, Cheryl. There I am. Way down at the bottom, but with four stars. An inspiring must have reference work. June 27th, 2015. <sighs> I hope I still have video quality as we near 30 minutes here. Uh, we're almost done. We're just going to be talking about this kind of religion because it's in verse 1. In case you're concerned. <laughs> and so, yes, right here in this little intro by Joseph Smith Sr. By the Spirit written by way of commandment. William Morgan. He's a master mason. They are commanded. It's a duty is what he's referring to here. <clears throat> to finish the book and make sure it gets published. And thus it's in the spirit of prophecy and revelation. And so the sealing is the use of John's not in the sense of a literal seal stamped on that you have to break the seals that he does talk about but he's talking about the coding of prophecy and revelation that needs to be decoded break the seal to read the book thus the sealed portion is not what Christopher claims it is even though he came out and claimed he was doing it to punk Mormons and yet there are still followers and believers in Christopher dumbasses but nonetheless it's a, a wonderful read but none of it's true because he's basing it on the core falsehood that there were actual sealed plates there weren't. It's a symbol code that all the scriptures need to be decoded. And so, uh, the gift and power of God is the decoding that they give you. The mysteries of God. It's not secrets, it's initiatories where you are giving your instructions and education into decoding of the scriptures using astronomy to know the dates knowing how to interpret them for the events prophesied to occur on the earth and thus the stories of scripture that are in written in such a manner All right. So, Mormons are not cast off forever, even though they're a part of the great and abominable church and held in bondage, and they don't think they're in bondage because they freely give their money and worship idol God, not real, non-Trinitarian Jesus. So that you may be found spotless at the judgment seat of Christ. Zion, 8 April 2024. And I'm concerned that we're going to have to have conference that weekend. Oh, God. And so again, Joseph repeats it in my spirit of prophecy and revelation. All right. And so, first book of Nephi rewritten and so yeah it was originally the book of Lehi 
as we all know, it's not a Mormon myth, but there was no Lehi. And so what it was, was the original manuscript of William Morgan. That's what we lost, Joseph, Jr. But it's not really his fault, his son died. And Martin Harris took advantage of that to steal them and take them up to his anti-Mason committee in Palmyra to see if there's any there there regarding what happened on 9-11-1826. And that's why Joseph had to be in timeout for a full year, not just the summer. Bruce. <clears throat> because people are trying to murder them. People are trying to destroy the book. And Senior makes this very clear to Junior in sections 3 and 10. <laughs> He's pissed. He's the master mason and his son blows the operation. <sighs> Dear God. And so, yeah, I tease him, even though he's dead, but he became the founding prophet of the church, not because he had the title prophet, <laughs> but because Senior taught him, trained him. Junior is the apprentice to be the master. And so, yes, even though Joseph finally became a Master Mason in 1842, when the Book of Abraham, or the, the Joseph Smith history also, finally got published because of the coup in 1838, <sighs> he was already taught much of the stuff. And so a lot of the stuff uh, he was doing on his own without his father being there to contribute because Joseph Smith knew what needed to be done and so the Kirtland Temple in 1836 it was just Joseph and Oliver who went into the temple and wrote it down <laughs> it was not real it was a vision remember learning of the Jews and so yes the Padawan had become the master Told you, it's in the learning of the Jews. <clears throat> and so the account also is part of the text. And Bruce made it the chapter ending. <sighs> and so instead of Lehi being the major author here, we now have Nephi abridging his father Lehi. So that they can solve the problem of Joseph Maria. <laughs> it's an awesome movie. I can't believe my mom went on a mission so that she would miss it. And then, and despite that, she wouldn't let me learn German. She didn't want to watch The Sound of Music, but she wouldn't let me study German in high school. What's up with that, Mom? Make up your mind. Are you a neo-Nazi or not? I wanted to learn German because Joseph Smith said that was the most correct version of the New Testament. Thank you, Martin Luther. But nonetheless. Alright, so then we'll finish with verse 1. Ooh. They included... Because I'm looking off of the 1830 edition here. Uh, verse 1 is, is composed of verses 1, 2, and 3, I think. Let me check. Yep. 1 to 3 is composed in chapter or verse 1 in the 1830 edition. So, wow, I, hmm, okay. We we're just gonna talk about mysteries because of the way the eight, 1981 edition had, well, it was the Brigham Young altered one with Parley P. Pratt turning it into chapters, but 
And so Joseph Smith Sr. is writing about the Christ. As we're 35 minutes in, <clears throat> the hero of the story is the Christ of the latter days, the man like Moses, the one mighty and strong, the Emmanuel the human who would be in the Mormon church to save Mormons. So this is him. This is Emmanuel, and he's using the code name Nephi. That's why the second vision of Joseph Smith is Nephi, not Moroni, because he is the Christ appearing to Joseph Smith. And so, yes, Moroni is too, but that's a different storyline for a different prophecy. <clears throat> and so, the future Christ has been born of goodly parents. No, they betrayed me. He's talking about descent. He is a descendant of Joseph Smith Sr. That's the goodly parents. So it's also Joseph Smith Jr. who's also part of the fulfillment here. You have to know the difference between the two of them. He's teaching as an apprentice his son to be the founding Christ of Mormonism. And so Nephi is the beginning. Nephi is also who gets the kingdom from Jesus, who comes from outer space without a flying white horse. No spaceship. No spacesuit, and uh, and so I have done the videos that he comes through Hiram for the latter days. Stephen Jr. for the start, Hiram for the latter day Christ through the Holy Grail. Remember York writes Knights Templar, the bloodline. Joseph Smith Sr., because of the incident with William Morgan on 9-11-1826, now became the bloodline, the keeper of the Holy Grail. And so his descendants are then to be the keepers of the Holy Grail. And so Joseph was murdered. But it's not through Joseph Smith III, with his Reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Wrong name, too, huh? And that's now the Community of Christ. It's through Hiram. And this is why only Hiram's wife with her son, young son, Joseph Fielding Smith Sr., go with Heber C. Kimball. And as you learn about the life and the teachings of Joseph Fielding Smith Sr., you can see the abomination that Heber C. Kimball did to him. Makes me cry. But that's why she did not stay behind with the other women in the Smith family. And William. Because she needed to go to fulfill prophecy that the man like Moses would be born and raised in the great abominable church. Section 103, verse 16. <clears throat> and yes, the prophecies do say that the latter-day Christ, his parents would betray him. His mother's name would be Judith. And so, yes, taught somewhat in the learning of my father, Joseph Smith Sr. With the Knights Templar, the Holy Grail, Friday the 13th, Bloodline, and New Israelite Jewish Kabbalah. Joseph Jr. is being taught this. And they're prophesying that the Latter-day Christ would catch on to this. Whew. That was a close one. <laughs> and so, yes, these are prophetic. 
not necessarily for Junior because it's in real time, but for the future guy. It's all prophecy. And it's prophecy, not because Junior is a prophet. <laughs> these are predictions. And these are high risk predictions. And if you know anything of the wood scrape of Nathaniel Wood, <laughs> you would know that Senior knows about that. <laughs> and yet, here he is taking a huge risk of giving us dates for Armageddon. <laughs> and yet, he's accurate, unlike Nathaniel Wood in the Wood Scrape. <clears throat> and having had a great knowledge of the goodness and the mysteries of God. The mysteries of God are initiations. They come from the Greek word mysterion, which means initiate. When a person goes through the temples for the first time, they go through the rituals, and it comes, it originates with the Egyptians, and it was passed down, and meaning was changed, altered according to the religion, language, culture, etc., of the different religions as they migrated out of Egypt and expanded over the course of time. <clears throat> but nonetheless, you can trace it all back to the Egyptians and correct what is wrong, or see what they added, which is correct. Remember, they are prophecies. The Greek gods are not real any more than Jesus is not real. Not real. Prophecies. And, uh, and so they become Christ through that ritual, just like Mormons. If you remove the endowment ceremony with the covenant oaths of loyalty and or die, and you have to pay to get in to covenant to die, to keep the grand secret. No. Just the initiatories is what Joseph Smith established. He didn't assign Brigham Young to do anything. He, Brigham Young had no authority to touch the temple. He was just a missionary. He was supposed to do one job and one job only, and he failed to do it, and he cooed the church. And so the initiatories, yeah, you're washed. Zadok, high priest in Hebrew and then anointed to become a king. Christ, thus anoint, king, throne, Sade. Melech in Hebrew, Melech, Zadok, Melchizedek, ta-da, the name of Christ, to replace the name of Christ to avoid the too frequent repetition of son Amen. Amenel, Emmanuel. Not Jesus. And so every single Mormon, if they had authority in this church, would be literally a Christ. Even the women. But nope, no authority. And as Section 85 tells us, the temple of the Latter day Church needs to be set in order. Alrighty, and so that's where we will stop, and then we'll come back with the next one about the learning of the Jews in greater detail, maybe? No, I did it. I covered it. So the language of the Egyptians. Well, no, we probably need to do that in greater detail. Or I can just do it quickly because <laughs> I did touch on some of it <sighs> yeah we covered it yeah we covered it